welcome back. Uh, this fourth video is going to focus on establishing the major edge loops needed for controlling animation. Now, the model that I produced so far contours with the form pretty nicely, but it doesn't actually do much in terms of establishing a setup for animation purposes. I'm going to need a couple of edge loops in play here to make sure the model deforms and bends correctly when it's animated. The first edge loop I'm going to need is one around the abdominal muscles. This muscle group is going to need to be contained so that when the torso stretches from side to side that the center abdomen doesn't really bend. We're going to need to create an edge loop around the breast so we can extrude it outwards. We're going to need to create an edge loop around the arm and the shoulder so we can start to produce the length of the arm. And we're going to need to create an edge loop around the neck so it separates out to be extruded upwards. We're going to try and then create some divisions for a trapezius structure along the back. And we'll finish up by creating a separate edge loop to wrap around the legs. Well, let's start out here with the abdomen. One of the things I like to do is to come in with my split polygon tool and start to draw out some directional changes. I've clicked on the center edge and I'm going to be working my way outwards with this. It looks like it actually split incorrectly. That's okay. We can go back in with one edge here and split outwards. There we go. Now it's working all right. I'm going to turn my corner here going downwards and following sort of the outside edge of my abdomen, I'm going to continue in till I make almost a circular shape on the form. Now this has created a n-gon and a tri in two corners. So with the split polygon tool again, I'm going to cut that triangle in half and go straight across, clicking and dragging to connect that vertice to the far edge. I'll right click to enter vertex component mode and I'll pull this backwards. I'll do the same thing for the lower edge of the form. Pulling it forward. And let's move this vertex position back just a little bit. And this is going to help me to contain any sideways stretching that might occur on the model as I develop out the character. And again, I'm going to go to normals, soften edge, once I've got that shape delineated. I want to next try and loop my way around the neck. Well, to do this, let's actually cut down my polygon count by one more. We'll go to normals, or sorry, uh, edit mesh, delete edge vertex, and we'll cut out that face for now. I just want to try and keep this a little bit simpler for the time being. I'm going to grab my edge right along the clavicle, and I'm going to hit extrude and hit W for the move tool. And I'm going to use this to position one edge at a time, working my way around the model. Now this can be quite a bit slower than using some of the other tools. But if you're really looking for a precise step-by-step -step way of doing this, extruding and then moving is probably one of the best ways to handle this. And in this case, it might be OK that the clavicle actually sticks out a little bit past the model. I'll work my way up here towards the shoulder. I'm trying to keep this over the deltoid for now as well. And then because it's quicker, I'm going to go to Edit Mesh Append Polygon Tool and sew this thing up with the Append Polygon Tool and use the Insert Edge Loop Tool to add one quick definition that I can pull out just a little bit more. It's just easier to do that than extruding two more times and merging my vertices. And creating this structure has actually now produced pretty nice definition for my neck. And I'm going to move some of these points around to just get my shape working a little bit better. There we go. You can see what shape we have so far. Again, I'm going to go to normals and choose Soften Edge. 
you can see that pretty easily. Let's turn that form back on. Now I want to start to build my arm, and to do this, I'm going to take the two bottom edges on the bottom side of this neck and hit extrude and move both of those edges out at once. Now when you do this, you're going to want to make sure that edit mesh keep faces together is turned on. Otherwise, these will extrude out separately. I'm going to pull these up just a little bit. And now I've got the start of my race track that I'm going to use for defining out this arm edge loop. Here's my starting line. I'm going to wrap all the way around the model and come back up to the other side. So I will take my first edge and again hit extrude and just keep extruding and moving. Potentially even using the rotate tool as I did there. To get these to wrap in a silhouette around the torso. And I've got some vertex points to move pretty clearly here. It takes a little bit of work to make sure you're not entering inside of the torso completely. But again, having this dummy in place makes it so easy because you don't have to go back and forth to your orthographic views consistently. You can stay in the perspective view, which is easier to use. I'm going to extrude and make one sort of small extrusion here, at least smaller than my last couple of faces. Uh, I'm going to do this because I can now select two vertices and merge these little parts together. Starting to connect up my form now. I'll go back to the edge component mode, hit extrude, and then move. We've got to make sure we're producing an accurate, complete loop around this section or else my deformation is not going to happen correctly. And we'll start to have a spiral around our arms. And that's pretty close to the last thing you want. Whenever you've got a spiraling set of geometry, it really gets out of control pretty quick. And you have no idea where to put your edge loops until you've got tons of extra edge loops and grid flow going all over the place. More important than that, though, your actual muscle structure really doesn't spiral. So it becomes really weird looking when you see it animated. Yeah, it looks like my scapula is going inside of this a bit for right now, but I think we're going to be okay with that for the time being. And again, moving, rotating, extruding, that's pretty much all we're doing here. And let's extrude one more time. And the last face, we can use the append polygon tool and sew that up. And now we've got something I think is working pretty well. You'll see the form that we're at currently. Let's go in. I think we've got a little bit of time here to start working on the breast. So let's move inwards. Uh, I'm going to get the append polygon tool and I'm going to append across these upper faces. I'm going to click and click all the way across and sew each one of these up and then I'll just use the split polygon tool to return this to being all quad in form. I'm going to try and trace this roughly to the shape of the breast that we have. Then I can go to select, select border edge tool, and double click, and it's going to select for me that whole open border edge. Then I can hit extrude at once, and actually I'm going to use the manipulator tool this time. I'm going to push in a little bit, and you know what, honestly that didn't work, so let's hit R for the scale tool and see if we can scale it together a little bit more traditionally once we've hit extrude. We can move this outwards just a little bit. And now we've got a starting edge loop around the breast that we're going to continue working with in the next video.